Knowledge and learning underpin the progress we make as individuals and as a society. When we know more, we can solve new problems and explore fresh possibilities. For hundreds of years, Oxford University Press has been committed to sharing the best in human thinking. From a child reading their very first words to a researcher expanding the frontiers of their field, we passionately believe in the transformative power of knowledge and learning to inspire progress and realize human potential. But the world is changing. When all information is at our fingertips, data needs understanding. As content crowds every screen, ideas need space to breathe. And when the next great thinker can come from anywhere, they need to be seen. So Oxford University Press is changing too. Whether we're making learning work for anyone, anywhere, anytime, connecting a global community of English language learners, or helping influential ideas achieve greatest impact, we will meet the needs of education and research in new ways, with new ideas for new audiences. For as long as the world keeps making progress, we will always be advancing knowledge and learning. Oxford University Press. Advancing knowledge and learning. Hello and welcome. I'm Liesl, a proud member of the TV team at Oxford University Press. I want to firstly thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Before we get into today's presentation, I would like to share with you a little bit more about Oxford University Press South Africa. Oxford, as we are more commonly known as, publishes for all educational sectors, including schools, higher education, and of course, TVET. We are an award-winning educational publisher with over 100 years of publishing experience in South Africa. Oxford University Press is South Africa's number one dictionary and literature publisher. We publish more than 2,700 books in 11 official home languages. Our books are well researched and we pride ourselves in the delivery of high service standards. There's a renewed focus from the government towards civil institutions and the upskilling of people and preparing them to enter the 21st century workplace confidently. One of the most anticipated changes within the TV arena is the revised syllabi in key subject areas. Oxford welcomes these changes as it speaks to our core mission statement to transform lives through education. We recognize the power of education to change and advance knowledge and learning by uplifting and empowering individuals. We strive in our commitment to develop and deliver high quality and affordable educational materials to learners, students, teachers, and lecturers. You, as lecturers, while well, you play a critical part in the delivery and the development of our youth, you stand at the front line of the educational system and we understand that these changes and shifts as you respond to the demands of the fourth industrial revolution can cause uncertainty. But by choosing to attend this presentation, you've taken the first step in responding to these changes. And it's our privilege to partner with you along this journey. Our main aim with this presentation is to carefully guide you through the changes of the revised curriculum and what the changes might mean to you and your students practically. Without any further delay, I will now hand you over to our subject expert and author who will inform us on the syllabus changes and expectations. A big welcome to all your colleagues who are joining us in this webinar today. We want to introduce you to the latest N5 Bass book in the succeeding series. But before we get there, I would first and foremost like to thank Oxford University Press for the opportunity to introduce this latest book to you. Without the input and support and ongoing advice, this book would not have been possible. As with the N4 book, this book will also follow the contextual model, making mathematics more relevant to the student in the workplace. This lets them realize how mathematics will personally benefit them in their personal careers. As with the N4 book, all answers appear at the back of the student's book, with fully detailed solutions appearing in the lecturer's guide. The main purpose of this book is to assist lecturers in the tests and also homework. Homework is easily given as there are no solutions given in the student's book, but there's a fully detailed worked out examples in the lecturer's guide. This will assist lecturers greatly in presenting their subject to their students. 
The aim of the revised mathematics in the five syllabus is to provide learners with the skills to identify and calculate mathematical problems in N5. The content forms part of engineering calculation problems from industry. Furthermore, Mathematics N5 will equip students with relevant knowledge to enable them to integrate meaningfully into their trade subjects and also serve as the foundation for the Mathematics N6 syllabus in order to achieve the National Diploma. The specific aims of Mathematics N5 is to continue with differential and integral calculus and to serve as a prerequisite for Mathematics N6. Furthermore, to assist students to obtain trade-specific calculation knowledge in the industry. Other specific aims of Mathematics N5 also include the promotion of correct mathematical terminology, promotion to focus on word problems and the problem solving thereof, in order to prepare the students for their relevant careers, use technology in mathematics and apply mathematics to further technology. Upon completion of this subject, the students should be able to apply the necessary knowledge of mathematics to the various engineering fields in their respective working environments and further to improve our higher cognitive skills pertaining to application, analysis, synthesis and evaluation, logical and critical thought processes. Their understanding and interpretation of real world problems and to promote mathematics as a tool to be used in troubleshooting in the different fields of study. When we come to the syllabus overview in comparison with respect to the old module, you'll notice that two models have been included. Areas and volumes, which include areas and volumes between a curve and one of the axes, or between two curves and one of the axes. With the second moment of area and moment of inertia, or otherwise second moment of mass, the student will be presented with the problem where the mass has not been given, but the answer requires the mass to be given. This means that they have to use the density formula to calculate the mass. We have to make quite certain that they understand this because certain of the math students might not have had done physics. So we have to make quite sure that this is understood by the student. When we come to the weighting factors, you'll notice that N5 seems to follow on where N4 left off. You'll find the differentiation, application of differentiation and integration techniques all seem to be around about 22%. And when we look at modules 1, 6, 7 and 8, we say they are approximately 6 to 8%. For internal assessment marks are valid for a period of one year and are referred to as ICAST trimester marks. A minimum of 40% is required for the student to qualify to entry for the final examination. Two formal class tests for full-time and part-time students or two assignments for distance learning students will be conducted. Calculation of trimester marks will be as follows. The weight of tests on assignment 1 will represent 30% of the syllabus. Weight or the test of assignment 2 will represent 70% of the syllabus. The external marks of final examination will be conducted in April, August and November of each year. The pass requirement is 40%. The final examination will consist of 100% of the syllabus. Duration of the final examination shall be 3 hours. The final examination will be a closed book examination and the minimum pass percentage shall be 40%. Now, as we approach the modules, module one will represent the Huppertal's rule and continuity. On completion of this module, the student should be able to apply the Huppertal's rule, which will really differentiate the numerator and denominator for indeterminate functions, as well as to state the conditions for continuity and determine whether a function is continuous or discontinuous at any specific point. Module two covers differentiation. On completion of this module, the student should be able to differentiate functions from first principles and apply the following differential techniques. Trigonometrical functions, the chain rule, implicit differentiation, logarithmic differentiation and inverse trig functions. I just want to add that inverse trig functions play a major part in this module and all six trigonometrical inverse functions have to be proved. With module three, we come to application of differentiation. Now, Newton's method must be understood by the student to be able to do many of these problems that they're going to come across. Often, the functions include a trigonometrical function and an algebraic one. So, to determine the points of intersection of two such functions is not easily done. So, the method of Newton is applied and therefore the student's knowledge of Newton's method must be clearly understood. The optimization and maximization of minimum values 
The calculations to solve applied optimization problems are very, very important. When it comes to related rates, in a related rates problem, the idea is to compute the rate of change of one quantity in terms of the rate of change of another quantity, which may be more easily measured. The procedure is to find an equation that relates the two quantities and then use the chain rule to differentiate both sides with respect to time. Whenever the function of y equals f of x has a specific interpretation in one of the sciences, its derivative will have a specific interpretation as a rate of change. When we get to module 4, which is integration techniques, I think we come to the section that's the most important part of all integration. Because with differentiation, it's quite simple. We have the product rule, we have the quotient rule, we have the chain rule, we have a lot of identities which we can use. But when we come to integration, it's a different ballgame altogether. Yeah, we only have what I would call the golden six rules, which is our sine, cos, tan, cot, sec, and cosec with the differentials. And when we reverse it, we find the integrals. That's basically all we have to our disposal. So we have to call it our basic integration from N4 section, as well as integration by inspection, which includes in all functions that have the respective derivatives under or in front of the integrand, and here, obviously, the identities of our utmost importance. On the other hand, integration by means of algebraic substitution has the idea that we replace a relatively complicated integral by a much simpler one. This is accomplished by changing from the original variable x to a new variable u, that is a function of x. Integration of trigonometrical functions, on the other hand, we try to write an integral involving powers of sine and cosine in a form where we have only one sine factor and the remainder of the expression in terms of cosine, or only one cosine factor and the remainder of the expression in terms of sine. The identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 enables us to convert back and forth between even powers of sine and cosine. Integration of trigonometrical functions includes square identities, different exponents, different coefficients, and tri trigonometrical substitution. Integration of algebraic fractions, on the other hand, when the highest degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the highest degree of the denominator, we first have to perform long division. Partial fractions, if the degree of the number is less than the degree of the denominator, we don't need to divide. In this case, we use partial fractions. And when we come to integration by parts, which I must insist is probably the most important section here, as as we go on in 5 and in 6, integration by parts is critical. When the integrand consists of the product of two functions, where neither is a derivative of the other, we use integration by parts. And once again, as I said, the integration by parts is of critical importance. Make absolutely certain your students can do this. Module 5 covers the definite integral. Definite integrals involves the calculation of basic definite integrals like we found in N4. When it comes to the change of limits, when an integral variable is changed, usually by substituting a simple one, for example u, we would prefer to change our limits to those with respect to u, which is usually preferable. At all times, the limits of integration should be changed when the variable is changed. If we look at infinity as a limit, Determine definite integrals to infinity as a limit. When the integral is bounded above and or below by infinity, we change limits to introduce a new limit for the upper or lower bound of the integral, as the integral to infinity does not make sense on its own. When we come to Laplace transforms, we apply the definite integral to the Laplace transformation. Here we prove many of the standard Laplace transforms and is rather an important section of the work. When we come to module 6, which includes areas of volumes, we come to one of the two new modules which have been introduced. Module 6 includes areas, which calculates the area between a curve and one of the reference axes, calculates the area between two curves. The student is expected to sketch the curves after calculating all the relevant points of intersection and the x and y intercepts. When we come to volumes, similar thing occurs. They have to calculate the volume, but only using the disk method. Shell method may not be used. Between a curve and one of the reference axes. Calculate the volume between two curves. Once again, sketch the curves after calculating all the relevant points of intersection and the x and the y intercepts. Now we come to the second introduced module, that of module 7. 
which includes the second moment of area and second moment of inertia, otherwise known as the second moment of mass. The other students are expected to determine the second moment of area with respect to a rectangular lamina, with respect to a reference axis in the plane of the lamina, and parallel to one side of the lamina. The axis may be through the centroid, one of the sides of the lamina, or even outside the lamina. Secondly, they have to determine the second moment of area with respect to a uniform circular disc, with respect to a reference axis through the centre of the disc and perpendicular to the plane of the disc. Furthermore, they have to determine the moment of inertia or second moment of mass of a rectangular lamina with respect to a reference axis in the plane of the lamina and parallel to one side of the lamina. The axis may be through the centroid, one of the sides of the lamina, or even outside the lamina. They have to determine the moment of inertia or second moment of mass of a uniform circular disc with respect to a reference axis through the centre of the disc and perpendicular to the plane of the disc. Module 8 covers differential equations. Now this module consists mainly of general and particular solutions of first and second order differential equations. So the students should be able to distinguish between a first order and second order differential equation. In the first order differential equation, they must determine the general and particular solutions of the first order differential equation by applying integration or the separation of variables. In the second order differential equation, however, they have to determine the particular solutions from general solutions of a second order differential equation under specific conditions. Just a few general comments to conclude with. Problems should be based on real world scenarios, allowing students to relate theory to practice. Emphasis of correct mathematical terminology should be encouraged and promoted at all times. A systematic approach to problem solving should be adhered to. Students should be encouraged to understand rather than memorize the basic formulae applicable to N5 mathematics. Answers to all calculations must be calculated correctly to three decimal places, unless otherwise stated. Approximations may not be applied to any calculations. The final answer must be rounded off to the stipulated degree of accuracy. The weight value of a module gives an indication of the time to be spent on teaching a module as well as the relative percentage of the total marks allocated to the module in the final examination. Learning content is given at the end of each module. These guidelines provide relevant examples, appropriate procedures and other pertinent information and may not be deviated from. But to round off this webinar, what have we included in our books? We've included module introduction stories, QR codes, worked out examples, multiple activities, module summaries, formula sheets, short answers in student book and fully worked out solutions in lectures guide. I just want to thank you for your time and effort that you spent to attend this webinar. I hope it's been informative to you. Thank you. Good day colleagues. Um, I trust that you have gained some value and perspective and insight to the uh, syllabus changes, the exciting syllabus changes coming in for the Maths in 5 revised syllabus that was presented by our author and subject matter expert. So my, my task here now would be to share with you the features, benefits and advantages of our product, which you can expect once you have purchased the Oxford University Press succeed in uh, series for mathematics in five. So to share a little bit of how we think and work within Oxford University Press in the TBET sector, we use a recipe known as our LARP Quality Assurance Model. And this acronym simply stands for our focus on language, which we, we look at in order to provide a level that is TBET appropriate a level that is understandable by students so that maths does not become this um, feared subject for students. We focus on the activities that we provide the students and the amount of activities that we provide in the textbook to ensure that you, the lecturer, have resources and tools at your disposal when testing students' competence and that students also has um, a resource that can provide them with these activities to improve their competence. Then we look at assessments, which you will find at the end of each module, which mimics what you would find 
generally within an ICAS assessment and internal assessment, as well as towards the national examination, which is the next quality assurance element, progression. So we want our students to pass at the end of each trimester and pass well. So we provide national examination mock exam papers as well to prepare them and guide them to what to expect come national examination time. And then the last P of our quality assurance model, the planning. That's a reserve for you, the lecturer. Because we know when we think of trimester, we think it's three months, but we know that in, actu in actuality, it's not three months. And that we actually have limited amount of time in order to complete the syllabus before national exams are staring us in the face. So we've used these elements to design our textbook and adhere to the Department of Higher Education and trainings, prescriptions and syllabus to ensure that our materials have been delivered to you, speaks to the TVET market, speaks to you, the lecturer, and to your students. Our textbooks, materials, and the digital platform, which I will get to now in a minute, is carefully developed alongside our subject matter experts and authors together with this quality assurance model. So let me take you through a few features and benefits. When you purchase the Oxford University Press um, product, you will get the student book and there is the offering of the lecturer guide as well. We have what's known as module openers. So here you will find the name of the topic or module, as well as the unit breakdowns and learning outcomes. And these are directly taken from the Department of Higher Education and Training Syllabus, not a word out of place. But we've presented it in such a manner that it's broken down into smaller manageable visual outcomes. So the flow chart at the top shows students where they will be starting, moving and ending towards in a module. The breakdown of the learning outcomes are taken exactly from the Department of Higher Education and Training Syllabus so that students know exactly what it is expected of them at the end of the module and for you as the lecturer as well as a bit of a checklist to ensure that each area has been covered with students so you can use this module opener as a quality assurance tool as well then just after this section of the learning outcomes and uh, unit breakdown we have an introduction so the introduction is kind of like a story towards a real world experience or example so that students through the power of stories and narratives can understand why they are learning what they are learning where, where do they apply it in the real world how is it applied in the real world what does it matter so we use the power of a story and short bullet points just to give students enough information to know exactly why it is that they are about to learn what they are about to learn, why it is needed in the real world. So these introductions you will find at our starting points at the beginning of each module. Then we have our activities. And there's a variety of activities within the textbook. And these are carefully placed at certain points of um, work. So as soon as a student has learned a certain section of work, there's an activity that will immediately test their competence, reinforcing that knowledge that has just been learned in a practical manner. And all these answers are provided in the lecture guide, which I'll get to now. And you don't need to work out any of these answers. It's there for you as the lecturer. And then the amount of activities that is provided, just before I get to the next point, can either be done in class or assigned as homework. So that's your choice on your teaching and learning style, whether it is contact time that you have throughout the trimester or the blended learning approach where it is contact plus online. But the activities will still be there at your disposal, either for the students to do at home or through a virtual session with you and the rest of the class. Then a great feature that has been well received um, with our N4 series was the QR codes. Now, this helps in many ways. Firstly, it extends the content that is provided. It enhances the learning experience and it speaks to a learning, I won't say a barrier, it overcomes a learning barrier. So we have different students. We have ones that read and learn. We have ones that listen and learn. We have ones that draw and learn. 
So we have different learning types. And then we have the visual, visual audio ones, which are videos. So through the power of videos, which is an integral part of the 21st century, fourth industrial revolution, the world in which we are evolving towards, videos play a key role in terms of learning and absorbing information in small bits of um, durations. So the QR code, once you have access to internet, Wi-Fi, is an awesome feature where students can actually learn a bit more. You don't want them only to know that little. You want their knowledge to expand. You want them to be holistic learners, to know a real world. So for example, here is um, the future of earthquake proof buildings. And that helps um, students identify real world applications to what they are actually learning in mathematics. So this was a very cool feature of the book. Then to reinforce key terms, definitions, and words that students really need to know within a certain module, we have key term boxes and definition boxes throughout the book, exactly at the point where the word occurs, we emphasize it in bold, and then you will have a definition or a key term box on that same page. We also have boxes that um, share, did you know, uh, which are interesting facts around a certain section of work. So there's a, did you know about that individual who was the pioneer or the founder of that rule? I won't even try and attempt to say his name um, of that rule. So these are key points and interesting facts that help students engage with the content outside of the actual content. So it's not just sums and pluses and minuses and maths, 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 but there's also these, these interludes of interesting facts and information and also points where they need to take note of something, um, whether it's an examination tip, whether it is how to use a rule properly when it is used so that you emphasize and reinforce certain key concepts within the book. Then we have at the end of each module, we have a summary. So it's a bullet breakdown of exactly the pertinent points that was covered within this module. We have a module checklist. So these are the outcomes per DHET syllabus and a checklist at the end, yes or no. So here's a, a, a helpful hint. You can use these checklists as a quality assurance tool in your classroom, where you have students virtually send it through a WhatsApp picture or in class, tick off what it is they know. So yes, yes, yes tick off what they don't know, so no. Then you can just walk around simply to the students and ask, so you said no here, were you absent that day? Do you need a repeat of the lesson? Uh, do you know which page it is on? So you guide the students towards the yes. But if they have ticked yes, also to check, do they know the responsibility of the checklist? You can ask the student, so you've ticked yes over here. So can you explain this rule to me? Can you do this equation for me? So through that, you are teaching the students to know their responsibility for their studies, take ownership of their studies, and also know the power of the checklist in terms of a quality assurance tool towards their studies before doing the exam practice. So at the end of the module, you'll have an examination practice, which provides sufficient questions that test the full knowledge of the module. So remember they had those activities broken up into certain parts that built up their competence. Now they are tested all in one at the end of the module. There's mark allocations also assigned to the question so that students know that um, when they provide an answer, it needs to be the full working out of the, the sum of the equation and not only just giving the answer. And that is how marks are assigned. So through this, they are preparing and familiarizing themselves with what to expect come a trimester internal examination or a national examination at the end of the trimester. Then talking about the mock exam, at the end of the book, after all the modules, you have a national examination exemplar. And this gears the students up for that full 300, um, 300 mark, for the full three hour examination paper, where it is under strict exam conditions. So you can use this and mimic proper external examination conditions in a classroom so that students become a bit more familiar with this and less fearful come the actual national examination. 
And all these activities, national exams, end of module assessments, all these answers are in the lecturer guide, which I'll get to now. So the lecturer guide is a tool that is provided to you, the lecturer, not as an extra paperwork, but as a support tool that reduces your workload, provides you with lesson plan templates and trimester plans, teaching suggestions from the subject matter experts and the authors that has had time in the classroom and is still in the classroom and shares their best practice of how to actually approach a certain topic or module. The elements in here are bearing one thing in mind, saving you time. So we know time is very valuable. So we want to pitch in and assist through this intervention of saving you time in the classroom to focus on your students and their progression. There's examination preparations and all the answers rubrics and suggested model answers are provided in the lecture guide as well. So here's an example of what the um, learning outcome mappings would look like. So we provide you the outcome in the one column, the worked out examples. Oh, that's one thing I never mentioned when it comes to the activities. Before we give the activity in the textbook, there's a worked out example and multiple worked out examples so that students can actually see how something should be approached. And now once they get that good understanding, now we give them the activity. So that is what you will see there in terms of worked examples. We indicate which activity or assessment is applicable to a certain outcome. And then also the resources within the textbook. So there's a QR code for this um, learning outcome. There's a QR code plus something else. So we guide you in the lecture guide of what is in the student book. Then here's an example of the teaching plan. The outcomes, the work, the example, the assessment and the resource. But the column at the end is empty. And that's only because we at OUP or anywhere else, we can't tell you when your start date and finish date is. And if we insert the dates, that means we are restricting it only to a certain trimester, whereas this teaching plan is now usable and reusable in different trimesters. So you can either photocopy this directly and place it into your portfolio of assessment, or you can extract the information from the electronic um, version, which I'll get to now on our digital platform, and populate it into your own college's template. And the last column is left empty just for you to insert the start date, the finish date and sign it off. And that is your proof that you insert into your portfolio of assessment. So we're providing you with all the ingredients, tools and resources to make your life a bit easier and saving you time. Here's examples of the solutions that are given in the lecture guide for all the activities. But when it comes to the exam practice, the ticks are provided so that students, yourself included, can see where marks are assigned to. So that it's not just five marks out of the thin air, but where exactly those five marks go to. So you can share these answers with your students, depending if it's a formative, summative, um, how, where the marks are allocated. Is it just for, for testing their competence or does the mark actually go towards their weightings? So how you share this, that is entirely up to you as the lecturer. Then excitingly, our digital platform. Before I get to the tool, which you see here, EduZone and Learning Zone, let me just tell you what it is about. So on the digital platform, we provide you with the digital resources and mainly the PowerPoint presentations, which is a front of class tool, which you can use um, and is flexible. Why flexible? Because it's not a slideshow, saved as a slideshow or a, a SharePoint document, but an open PowerPoint presentation where you can actually add, delete as you feel it suits your teaching style. So you might like more pictures, add them in. You may like less pictures, delete them. But the basic PowerPoint presentation per module is provided to you so that you can just open it up and start as a front of class tool to share with your students what it is expected of them. So what you see here is learning zone and edu zone. So the difference is only probably the name. So we are currently on learning zone. So if you have not yet used this platform, don't worry. The same learning material that you have been afforded or will find on learning zone is now just being moved over onto our new and exciting platform, which will have new developments come 
the future is EduZone. <clears throat> so Learning Zone will be finishing off this year and we will be saying welcome to EduZone next year. And this platform will provide you with the same free resources, the PowerPoint presentations, plus the lecturer guide electronic version, which you can then use per module. So if you have not yet heard of these platforms, please get hold of your sales consultant so that you can also share in this digital experience. Then just to give you a quick breakdown of um, what we have just gone through now, we align ourselves fully to DHGT, the syllabus, and we stick to that when developing our materials alongside subject matter experts and um, authors. We align our student book and lecturer guide together so that you have a full package and resource with quality materials for your students and yourself. Then we provide additional resources. In this case, there is no workbook, but these apply to other subjects that you may be teaching. Um, yeah. So just check out our catalog in terms of the resources that come with workbooks. But with all our recipe of our books, we have our module openers, the introduction, the starting points that are localized um, case study, real world type of scenarios. Then we have activities and worked out examples. Then did you know boxes, definition boxes and exciting the QR codes that bring the information to life. Then at the end of the modules, we have our summaries, checklists, and assessments. And at the end of the book, we have a national examination paper, which helps prepare your students for the national examinations. Then we have our digital platform, <clears throat> which is currently in our learning zone, moving over to EduZone. And there you will find your front of class PowerPoint presentations, lecturer guide, um, samples, electronic versions, where you can copy and paste and move into your templates for lesson plans or semester plans, trimester plans, the information. And then of course, additional support and um, guidance through webinars, virtual presentations and workshops. So if you feel that a workshop will benefit your, your subject and your lecturers and your college, get in touch with one of our sales consultants and we can see to work something out to actually visit you at your premises or a virtual workshop where we can share subject matter, expert knowledge with you um, and best practice so that we can improve the subject of mathematics throughout all colleges. So that brings me to the end of my uh, session with you now today. And just let me move this out of the way so that you can see that our N6 title is loading and we're excited to bring that to you once it has been approved and uh, in the market. But for now, get hold of your sales consultant uh, for your sample copy of mathematics so that you can succeed in TVET as well as maths N5. Trust that this presentation has brought value and insight to you. And we wish you from Oxford University Press Team TVET, we wish you well with your subject to you, your college and your students. Okay, goodbye for now.